what's up guys welcome to the channel this is Somerville Serpents and I am Tyreek and in today's video we're going to talk about what it costs to be the boss paying the cost to be the boss um what I mean by that is we're going to give our take on what it takes to build a collection some of our rights some of our wrongs um, we're actually going to go over in detail, very specifically, what we paid for each animal, what we paid for our rack systems, deals that we got, everything else, so that we can put a total budget together and tell you whether I think I did it the right way, the wrong way. The only thing that I know for sure is it's not the only way. There's plenty of different ways to do this. You can have a huge budget where you can buy in. I heard an a, a amazing testimony today from Tony Thomas himself, one of his old videos he did with Justin at Canova about three years back, saying how he started with about $400. And I believe it was a Mojave ball python he spent the 400 bucks on. Ended up acquiring a couple normal females that were given to him, started breeding, and went on his journey like that. So literally with $400, started his journey um so the ups downs that have been for us so far here at somerville serpents and if there's anything that we would change what would that be with that being said let's get to it all right so first up here today we're probably gonna talk i'm gonna say you're probably your most expensive or not your most expensive sorry our most expensive purchase to date as far as a singular item actually it's tied for first but we haven't got the other thing in yet so i'm not going to give away any secrets but anyways our rack system um starting off off the bat and i think i got a pretty decent deal on it please in the comments down below correct me if i'm wrong we spent about fourteen hundred dollars on our rack system originally it came with 10 V35 short bins, 14 CB70 or Vision 70 series tubs. And yeah, that was it. Two levels. So 24 tubs. We paid $1,400 off the bat, right? Now, we're going to include the price of the 30 hatchling tubs. We just paid about... 250 260 on that so that puts us up to six let's say short end 1650 off the bat for racks and and tubs and everything else now put to the side the thermostats other stuff like that thermostats alone i have a herb stat four i have a herb stat two i have a ve 200 a ve 100 and some other couple miscellaneous ones. So let's say low end. I think I paid three fifty for the herb stat four. So that puts us at two grand, right? Sixteen fifty, three fifty, two grand. Another say two hundred low end for that. That's twenty two hundred dollars so far, without any snakes included. Now keep in mind, when I started this journey. So the way we got started here, some of our servants. We had a normal ball python. Her name was Eve. I believe she had a parthenogenesis clutch. Uh, I was told she had never been paired to a male when I first got her. She was eating at the pet shop before I got her. This is what I was told. Uh, I acquired her. She would not eat for months and months and months. She would not eat. I did not know what was going on. To the point that I started bringing her to other local pet shops. Hey, can you tell me that? So, hey, I think she might be gravid. So I'm like, what? Yeah, she's pregnant. I had no idea what these terms meant. I've always had a passion for ball pythons. Always had a passion for reptiles in general. Had them growing up. Had boas. Had other pythons. Had ball pythons. Had lizards. Had geckos. Had birds. Had cats. Had dogs. Always have loved animals. But... I wasn't very well informed about ball pythons. So anyways, a couple months later, she sheds out a couple times, real in quick succession, back to back. 
One morning, I got a phone call from my sons. Dad, Eve had eggs. Eve had eggs. I said, what? Get the beep out of here. No way she had eggs. I come home. Sure as shit. There was about nine eggs sitting underneath her. I believe eight good ones, one slug. Or maybe more than that. It could have been more. It could have been 10, 11 eggs. She had a huge clutch. This girl was a big girl. Um, I didn't know about incubators. I didn't know about correct temperatures to incubate at. Anything. This girl had her first clutch in a glass enclosure. I got a... I got a... 40 gallon breeding, breeder a, uh, uh, terrarium, put her in it. That's where she delivered her eggs. Now, since I wasn't prepared, I figured, hey, this girl will, you know, maternally incubate them. The eggs will be fine. Sure enough, because it was a powerful clutch, they didn't survive, may, not even maybe a month, but started smelling real bad, everything else. Fair to say we had to get rid of them. But that experience right there, one, it sparked something in me that I said, oh, I need to have this experience again. And two, it devastated me. My kids really wanted to keep one of those babies out of the clutch. I had already planned, I, 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 I never planned to get big into this where I wanted to have however many babies, seven, eight, 10, 11 babies, however many eggs there were. I believe it was under 10 eggs. But anyways, I never planned on that. And then when that experience happened, it's like I caught a fever, a bug, instantly turned me into a ball python addict. I started going out buying tanks left and right like crazy. I shopped through. All I had on my mind at first was spides. I wanted to make spides. I wanted to make spides. The only snake that I still have from the collection that I originally bought Matter of fact, we'll pull him out real quick. I'll show you guys so you don't have to stand here and listen to me talk all day. But we're going to get to some snakes. Is this male piebald right now. And we got him as a little tiny hatchling. And if you would believe it now, he's up to about 600 grams. He'll be a year old in a few months. He's actually up to the size and producing sperm plugs where we could start breeding him. So now, what did I say? Two grand, another 200 for the other miscellaneous thermostats, everything else, male piebald, hatchling size, 350. So that's 2550 we're up to, right? Now this is before I even knew what I wanted to do for sure. I wanted spides. I went out and spent a few more hundred dollars on a spider hat pied female. Then I learned about the spider controversy and knew, no, maybe that's really not for me. Changed directions. I blew a shit ton of money in the beginning, poorly investing. I wish I had a role model in this industry that would have set me straight from the beginning and told me, hey, pick something that you're passionate about, pick something that you really wanna work with and base your pairings off of that, off of what you're trying to, to uh, produce. It would have saved me so much money in the beginning, uh, so much space, so much everything. And then I started, once I figured it out, so that's Kane, we're gonna put him back away. Sorry for disturbing you, buddy. We're gonna feed you guys later this week. So instead of going willy nilly, blowing all this money on a bunch of 40 gallon breeder tanks and all these other big tanks and all these big fancy hides and big water bowls and all these vines and like you see in the uh, uh, iguana thing, all these logs and giving it a background and trying, obviously you want to give your animals the best quality of life, but when you actually get into this and you start breeding, it's not realistic. When you have on your mind, you're going to keep these snakes. They're still pets. You still love them. You still care for them. You still give them the best quality of life that you can, but you have to do it economically. So Rax is definitely the way to go when, when you're breeding. So, okay. Now that out of the way, let's say another thousand dollars, right? We spent in tanks and other snakes that we ended up trading or, and I'm ashamed to say it, but I do believe most beginner breeders end up doing this where they'll sell off snakes or trade snakes to try to enhance their collection and stuff like that. So we did do a little bit of that at the beginning, but then I, 
I said, okay, I made up my mind. And this is 100%. We have a few different projects. And like I said, if I had known what I know now, I would have executed this a little bit better. But for sure that we are definitely going to be known for. It is going to be Bell's Blue Eyed Blue Cystics. It's going to be Pied's. Hypo pie. So all different type of pie combos. And Desert Ghost and Clown. We're going to hit Hypo Clowns, DG Clowns, Hypo DG Clowns, hopefully in the future. Uh, and Ultra Mel. I'm going to make... I got something coming special for you guys. I'm not going to release my secret right now. But I, I'm pretty sure next year we're going to make a world's first. Our second year in breeding ball pythons. I got a crazy ultra male combo. I don't know how people haven't done it yet or why they haven't thought about it yet or anything else, but we're gonna go for it. So another grand, right? What are we at? 3,500, right? No, 3,550, that's where we're at, another grand. So then off the bat, our big girl right here, Athena, who we're nesting, who's nesting right now, I think. She looked real swollen, like literally like she swallowed a softball yesterday in her midsection. But when I opened her tub and she kind of slithered out and started moving, it didn't look quite as big. So again, first year, I'm not 100% sure on the ovulation. Wasn't quick enough to get a picture, but I, I, fingers crossed, I'm almost certain to say this girl's going to go. We're going to put in a male one more time, see if they lock up again. If she refuses him, fair to say she's done breeding. She's not going to... Uh, she's definitely going to go. But anyways, so that being said. So this girl right here is Athena. We ended up paying $220 for her. So we'll call it 200 just to be safe. That was 355 200 so three seventy-five, three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars so far, and now we're just getting into snakes. Never mind mulch or cocoa bedding, food, everything else. We're just gonna low end it. This girl right here, another I want to say two fifty, three hundred. Isabella. Thirty-seven. So. $4,050 we're at right now with her being another $300. $4,050 we're at, right? We already counted. No, we, didn't count, we already counted Canaan. Shiva. Super pastel het pie. I believe I got. Ooh, hey, girly. I believe I got her for $200. So that's $4,250. Now, if you see Shiva here, we started pairing her to run $1,300 grams. She's starting to get real thick here on her backside. She's always on her cool end. I'm not sure if she's producing follicles yet. We should be picking up an ultrasound here in a couple weeks. So, 42.50 right there with Shiva. 42.50. Okay, one second, baby girl. So, 42.50. Another 450. 46.50. 4,700 right here with our boy Apollo. 4700 we're invested so far. 4700 Yep, Kane's already thing. I don't want you to get a bit. She came flying out last time. 4700 probably my, Probably my best deal right here. An adult breeder size, lesser girl. Friend. Uh, I, I did a favor for a friend, picked her up. So, didn't cost us anything. Hopefully, we'll be able to make some... Some hatchlings, some uh, bells off of this pairing. She was actually bull wrapping earlier and stuff today. So she might be a late goer for us. But so a lesser girl. Yep. Lesser girl right there for free. So we're still at 4700 Hi, girl. Forty-seven hundred. Um, Thor. He's our coral glow G stripe male. I figured if I paid two fifty three hundred, we're gonna say three hundred just to round it off. That's five grand right there. Five grand already invested. T 
Tut, I got in a trade actually. So I had I traded a vanilla fire, a vanilla cream hat pied female that I paid about 250 for for this breeder size male that I wanted to put into my bell project. So five grand, 5250 right here with Thor. And we're gonna have to change his water out. On King Tut. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, for King Tut. Yeah, for Tut, not Thor. So 5250. Artemis, our ultra male butter male. We just paid 500 for. So 5750. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's so beautiful. He is beautiful. We're going to make some crazy babies with him. 5750 and then another say 250 right here. This is $6,000 invested. $6,000 invested. This is Hercules, our mimosa hat pied female. He's a, watch your hand. A hypo champagne female. hat pied, no, hat pied male. You Breeder said, male. You said female. Oh. I'm like, what? I did not say female. Well, if I did, I apologize. Male. You said this is a mimosa so, female. Okay, so next up, we're at 6,000 right here. Between the racks, thermostats, everything else, and just our breeder size males and females. We're at 6,000. Next up, we got some smoke shows on the way. And I guess I'm going to reveal what's coming next here at some of those serpents because I have their tubs labeled. They're already ready to go. And for purposes of this video, I just wanna show a little comparison about once I decided what I was gonna do and before I had a real good idea of what I wanted to do. Um, I did know I wanted to do pies and I know I wanted to do bells, so I invested some of that money, but I could have invested a lot smarter and a lot better. Since we, since we, decided for sure what we wanted to do. We have put some serious money into our future projects over the next couple of years. So anyways, with that being said, next up, Celine, a female, pastel, hat pied, hat hypo female. Um, she's hiding away, so you can't really see her. But anyways, I promise she's in there. Um, we got her for a deal. She's about 700, 800 grams right now. We paid only 150, so that's 6,150, 6,150. Next up, Clown Male. He's 66% Hypo, 66% Het DG. I honestly, I have a feeling he's gonna prove out for both. If he does, we got this boy for a steal, but another 350, so 6,150, 350, 6,500, 6,500. Where at? And if you can see, he's a little smaller. He was a hatchling, a 2022 hatchling, a little bit small. Let me see, matter of fact. I get show you guys. I don't want to show you guys all hides and stuff. As you see, he has some great size to him. He's getting ready to go back into shed. Has some scale spread. He has a nice good meal in him uh, from the other day. So beautiful male though. So that puts it at 6,500. As you notice, most of their enclosures are perfectly clean. We go through every Saturday or Sunday and try to clean up. Bedding is not cheap, everything else, but $6,500 so far. This girl, ooh, she finally shed. I gotta take that out. She finally shed, she pooped. She also flipped her water bowl. This girl right here, a 2019 female Pastavi, Pastel Mojave, visual hypo, 66% hat for clown, 50% hat for DG. I was hoping to send her shed in to test for the DG and the clown. There's no test for DG yet, so we still might send it in to test for the clown. But I'm pretty sure this girl's going to prove out too, just based on the male, uh, uh, the breeder that I got him from and having conversations with him. This girl right here was a li originally listed for 900 We got her for six. And that puts us to 71, 7,100. I'm going to take this girl. 600. 600 bucks. Yep, 600 bucks we paid for. We're at 7,100 right now. Hi, mama. She's probably looking for a meal. I'll clean that out after we're done with the video. I'm not going to make you guys watch me clean this. We'll put some new bedding in. Just want to get that shed out. So this is a problem when you get a shed like this from your females, if you do want to get it genetically tested, you need to try to get them almost instantly after they shed. You don't want them getting super wet. 
You want to put them in a Ziploc bag, have them dry out, be able to send it in. I don't know if this is going to be any good now with all the uh, cocoa substrate and everything all over it. So I will reach out to Morph Market's team and see what they say. I am going to put this in a plastic bag just so we can try to test it. And look, it's a perfect shed literally all the way from the tip of the tail. And I think you can still see the eye caps on it. Perfect humidity, perfect temperatures for her. We'll clean that up in a second. So anyways, let me put this right here for a second. 7,100, right? 7,100 Calypso we got in a trade. This is our female pastel NG Genex Het Pied. She's a 21 female, extremely undersized. You would think she'd be pretty much up to size this year. She's only sitting at about five to 700 grams. Um, she's a beautiful girl. I love the GNX influence. I've never some of the speckling and the way the dorsal stripes connect with the NG and the flaming and everything else. Our first GNX, uh, I, I can't wait to see it in Pied. Okay, just double checking, girl. Anyways. Um, but we did, we traded her for our boy Poseidon, who was a hypo mystic potion. He cost three fifty, dollars so that's $74.50. And I know, nah, it's not a fair trade. She's not even breeder size, da da da, overpaid. I know, was kind of doing a friend a favor, got something back, and something that was going to progress my pie project down the road even further. I didn't really know what I was going to do with the... Uh, with Poseidon, the Hypo Mystic Potion male. So anyways, we're at 74.50, right? 74.50, and then we got Hermes. Hermes is a male 21 fire, 100% Het Hypo, Het Desert Ghost, Het Clown. I was originally planning on using him as a backup male, as a backup male, but I, he's already producing sperm plugs and he is 100% Het, so he might actually take the lead role but anyways, with that being said, this male right here was another 500 bucks. So that puts us at 79.50, pretty much $8,000. So $8,000, right? We're gonna say $8,000 just to round it off. That's without betting, without food, everything else. I'm gonna tell you right now, 1,400, 800. We have two desert ghosts on the way. We have a, we have a, Female Enchi Lesser, Desert Ghost, 100% Hypo. And we have a male Fire Orange Dream, Desert Ghost, 66% Hypo. We paid $2,200 for the pair. So that puts us at $10,200 we have invested so far. That puts us at $10,200 we have invested so far between racks and animals and everything. One, that cost could be significantly lower, or at least $1,000 lower for the other animals that we bought and traded and everything else when we didn't know the direction that we were going in. For two, this collection could be a little bit smaller and a lot more complete. We could have got one clown male, two or three clown or het clown females. One pied male, two or three clown or het, clown, uh, het pied females, or hypo pied However, we want to go with that project. One desert ghost male, two or three desert ghost males. And I know those are a little bit more expensive, the recessive gene and stuff like that. But anyways, my point is we could have compacted this collection, had it a lot more refined and been able to produce more recessive clutches uh, with a lot more fire and stuff in it maybe more kicker jeans maybe not depending on the prices that you pay but the overall point is having a direction knowing what you want to do for projects and moving in that direction sticking to your guns and not flip-flopping all over the place that's the main thing that i want you guys to get away from today's episode if you're gonna get into this industry and i'm fortunate i have parents who back me who allow me if i need to uh, to borrow some money or help me out and everything else. I understand some people don't have that. For the most part, I bust my ass. I go to work. I make sure my family's taken care of and whatever extra I have to put into that, which is why a lot of these snakes were paid through payment plans and stuff like that, then that's what I do. If I'm in a rush or if it's a last minute thing or I need to do it, I can lean on my parents for a little bit of help, which is tremendous of them. Um, 
but it doesn't have to be $10,000 that you invest into this to try to start it up and to get it into a business and everything else. Just invest smartly, take your time, think about what you want to do and move in that direction. Do not spread yourself too thin. That was my thing. I got a whole bunch of this, a whole bunch of that. I'm trying to do all these different projects at once instead of mastering one or two of them. So that's the only thing that I would say differently. I would take my time. I would invest wisely. I would stick to a few projects, especially for first year, second year. This is our first year. We're gonna get some G Stripe. Hopefully we're gonna get some Bells and Pies. Um, but we could, we could be, could have waited an extra year instead of rushing and been coming out with some heat for our first year. Well, not that it's heat. Obviously, all ball pythons are beautiful. We're going to do well. We've lined up some stuff with some local pet shops and other other things like that where we shouldn't have a problem get, selling our babies. And we're going to decide what we want to hold back and everything. But my overall point is it doesn't take $10,000. You can do it on a smaller budget. And... You could do it better than I can. So if you take anything from this, or if you if you need help, if you have any questions, reach out to me personally on Instagram at Somerville Serpents. You can message me on Facebook at Tyreek Somerville. You can send me a message in the comments right here on this video. If there's anything that I can do to help the next person or someone who may be interested in this, please reach out. I will go out of my way to do whatever I can for you. With that being said, I just wanted to put everything out on the table. From day one, I've been saying we're gonna be completely transparent and I still fully intend to do that. So I just wanted to show you what we're working with here, what we've invested so far, what direction we're gonna go in and why we chose to do those things. And at the end of the day, I think we could have done better. But with that being said, we're going to keep pushing and we're going to do what we have to do. Peace, love, and blessings from my family to yours.